So we're here to talk about um, online reputation. So we're gonna talk about exactly how improving your reputation um, affects your patient acquisition rates. So I'm gonna be going over a few different things. Um, let me see here. So you guys already know me, Pauline Ith. Um, I'm a marketing account manager here at GMR Web Team. And like I said, we really focus on helping you improve patient acquisition and retention through a variety of methods, online reputation um, being one of them. So for today's webinar, we'll be talking about a few different things. So first we'll talk about online reputation and how it relates to um, the three pillars of healthcare marketing success. And then we'll talk about exactly how online reviews affect um, your patient acquisition rates. And then we'll talk about um, kind of what to look for and what to um, what goal you wanna achieve um, when it comes to online reviews and what matters. And then obviously we'll talk about um, tips uh, to improve your online reputation. Um, and then obviously we'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, so if you have any questions, just save it for then. So I wanna talk about the three pillars of healthcare marketing success since um, partnering with Sturdy to do um, you know, a webinar series about this. It's a philosophy um, unique to GMR, but I just want you guys to keep in mind for your physical therapy practice, I recommend that whatever marketing strategies you use, um, you need to strengthen um, the three pillars. So first one, creating a loyal and satisfied patient base. You just wanna make sure um, you're putting all this effort to improving your reviews, your online presence. You just wanna make sure you delight your patients and you keep anyone that you're acquiring. And then second pillar, um, which is what this webinar is about, um, is creating um, you know, a stellar online reputation, getting more patients from that. Because as we already talked about, um, you know, a lot of people are searching online. So you wanna make sure your online reviews make a really good first impression um, to get patients through the door. And then obviously um, online presence. So this is the stuff people typically think of um, when it comes to marketing, so SEO, um, website development, social media, obviously very important role it plays in your online presence and patient acquisition. Um, but like I said, this webinar will be focusing on online reputation. So let's define what that is. Um, so basically, you know, it's how your practice is perceived online and this can be through a variety of things. So this can be, let me see here. So it can be through your website, any press, you know, you're doing any, um, media activities and obviously your online reviews. So when patients search review, um, your reputation is front and center. Um, and you can see that here with this Google local pack um, ranking, you can see the number of reviews listed um, and information about the practice. And of course, um, you know, your reputation has a profound influence on the amount of new patients that come through your door. Um, so in this webinar, like I said, we'll be focusing on online reviews specifically since that's, um, been something of concern and a developing trend over the last few years. So um, we know most searches happen on Google and they display your reviews and information front and center. So like I said, you just wanna make sure you make a good first impression because if you have poor reviews, um, the prospective patients are gonna be a lot more hesitant to reach out to you for appointment. And even if they come from a physician referral or someone within your own patient base, if they look you up and they see bad reviews, you're kind of thinking, okay, why do they have bad reviews even though I got a referral? Um, and again, you wanna think back to, um, you know, whether you like reviews or not, it's just the way uh, patients are now ingrained to think. Um, think, you know, hotels, restaurants, um, products on Amazon, a lot of people really do like to look at reviews and want to know what other people experience, you know, before they buy or make an appointment, for an example. Um, one more thing I do wanna mention though, a lot of practices we work with, um, obviously they're in business, so they're not, um, you know, running anything, you know, bad in itself, even though their online reviews, um, you know, may, you know, say otherwise. And we often find it's because happy patients don't really want to leave a review and they don't really think too much of doing it. And unhappy patients tend to be a lot more vocal. So we also often find your online reviews and reputation don't necessarily match up to your patient satisfaction. So that's something we want to fix, right? Um, another thing I want to note is that better reviews, a more positive online reputation, um, it improves your Google ranking. So that also helps with your online presence in, in terms of SEO. So Google likes showing people who have good reviews, obviously, because they don't want to um, <laughs> show anyone who has bad reviews and recommend that, right? So that also helps with your um, acquisition rates. And let's talk about kind of 
you know, what you want to achieve in terms of, you know, your goals for online reviews, because um, we know uh, getting a single review isn't enough. Um, so your star rating, um, review recency, and number of reviews factor into how prospective patients will perceive you. So, you know, I pulled some data and we've done our own research ourselves. Um, and we found that, you know, 75% of patients would only consider practices with a minimum uh, review of, you know, review rating of four stars or more. Um, so you can see here, um, I just pulled a local listing from my hometown about some physical therapy practices. So you can see here, obviously this first um, practice appears a lot more attractive than even a practice with no reviews, one star review, you know, a few stars. Um, so you wanna make sure you maintain at least a 4.0 rating. Um, we also found that 60% of patients actually check 10 or more reviews before deciding on a healthcare provider. Um, I know it seems kind of like a lot of reviews, but I think of when you look at um, a restaurant, I'm always kind of looking through a ton of reviews before I decide to go there. Um, so you can see here, these two practices are kind of meeting that minimum threshold. So think about your online reviews right now. Do you have at least 10 reviews, um, especially at each location, if you have multiple practices? Think about that, because um, that's what we think is the minimum. And then we also see that 80% of patients find that a review, um, a review's age reflect, affects its reliability. So you have um, you know, good ratings and reviews, but it's from a year ago. A lot of new patients searching right now aren't gonna deem that as credible. Um, they're kind of probably gonna be wondering, okay, why haven't they gotten new reviews since then? So you wanna make sure you're generating reviews um, on a monthly basis. And it doesn't take a lot of reviews too, because obviously not every patient's gonna write a review but at least two to three at least is good enough to help increase the quantity and also increase your star rating over time. So don't expect um, you know, 50 reviews every month, um, but at least two to three is pretty good. And then we also found that 69% of patients visit two or more review platforms. So um, even if you have great reviews on Google, you'll always obviously wanna make sure you have good reviews on Yelp, or health grades and other review sites. Because if patients think, okay, they have really good reviews on Google, but then they see in the search, okay, Yelp is 2.0 stars. Um, they're gonna think, okay, what's going on here? Like what's with the discrepancy? So you wanna make sure um, you increase the diversity of your reviews across all different platforms. Um, and that leads to my next topic, which is a lot of, um, a lot of practices ask me, you know, which review sites are most relevant. So we've done research on that ourselves. And we find that, you know, obviously two or more review platforms, um, you know, that's needed. So if you wanna prioritize Google, 66% um, of prospective patients check that. And then we find that Yelp is still very, um, you know, popular uh, with a lot of patients, 35% um, check Yelp. And then we find that 24% of prospective patients check health grades. So these are kind of the top three we found. Obviously there's other ones like Facebook, um, you can leave reviews on Facebook, um, Vitals, um, but your focus, um, especially if you have good reviews on Google, is to get reviews on other sites. Um, like I said, if you have great reviews on one site, but very poor reviews elsewhere, um, it's still going to look a little bit concerning um, and affect your patient acquisition rates. So now we're going to talk about, um, you know, exact tips to create a stellar online reputation. Um, it's a lot easier than you think, um, but, you know, the first tip I have is that make sure online review listing profiles are accurate. Um, and also in order to monitor and generate more reviews, you need to claim your listing. So a lot of practices that come to us, they don't have all their review listings claimed, or if they do, it's, um, you know, they might want to claim some for their individual providers. Because um, Google, you can do both. You can have one for your individual PTs plus um, Google itself. Um, I know sometimes practices, um, they have rotating PTs, um, some PTs leave, but if you have a lead PT or you yourself are the owner, you want to make sure you have your own individual Google My Business too and getting reviews on there um, because doctors might refer to your name specifically or patients might refer to your name specifically. So um, you want to make sure you claim both. Um, and like I said, hit all those major review sites, Google, HealthGrades, Facebook, and Yelp um, in order to manage all those listings. And then thirdly, um, something that seems common sense, um, but I find that a lot of practices when we do the initial um, online listing evaluation, um, their name, address, and phone number aren't actually consistent. Um, 
And some tips here, you know, for if you have like a name, you just want to make sure it's the same on all review sites. I find that sometimes on Google My Business, some practices add a little bit of extra content after the practice name. And I think they do that for SEO reasons, but that might actually hurt because Google will evaluate all of your listings if that has, you know, any discrepancy. They ding you a little bit. So you just want to make sure all your um, names are correct. Same thing with the address. Um, they're pretty fickle about it. So if you're spelling out sweet, you just want to make sure you do that on all your listing sites. Um, if you use the shortcut STE, you just want to do that, um, make it the same. Um, so make sure you claim all your listings. Um, not sure if you guys have done that already, um, but you just want to make sure you do that. And then if you have questions too about like claiming a listing, it's pretty easy. You usually will just need to verify via like a postcard um, that's sent to the location or via phone call or even a domain email. And then sometimes you may have to upload like a driver license or some sort of proof um, that you own the practice, but it's a pretty easy process um, to get approved. So it's nothing too difficult. Second thing, um, you actually wanna monitor your online reviews. So how can you understand your online reputation if you don't monitor? Um, make sure you enable notifications for all online reviews. I know Google My Business sends reviews out, um, an email notification every time you get a review. Um, have someone on your staff or yourself do weekly check-ins on all your online review sites. So many practices I talk to have no clue about their ratings, um, you know, what reviews they're getting. Um, so by keeping tabs, you'll know where you need to generate more reviews and um, where your focus should be. In addition, um, I do encourage everybody to take some time, you know, 15 minutes, you know, every week or every day, just read the actual feedback people are leaving. Um, many people often focus on, oh my God, I got this negative review, um, which obviously is important, but you also wanna see what you're doing right. Um, this helps improve the all, overall patient experience, right? You're continuing to delight patients if you know what you're doing right, you know, what PTs are great, um, what the front desk um, interactions like. And also you'll know too, if there's a pattern um, in any negative reviews, right? Is it a common occurrence with the wait time? Is it something to do with how the staff's answering the phones? Um, so by monitoring the online reviews, um, you kind of kill two birds um, with one stone, uh, you know what's going on and then you can improve the patient experience. Perfect. So now we kind of have the foundation. Um, so let's talk about exactly how you generate more reviews. So you want to create a solicitation process. Um, you know, one important thing is to really train your staff and your PTs on how to like ask for reviews. Um, we find that a lot of practices aren't proactively asking patients. And remember what I said earlier, right? Happy patients often forget to leave a review. Um, so by giving them a reminder, um, you kind of give them that extra push to say, oh yeah, I need a leave a review for um, you know, the practice. So it's critical to train your staff. Um, it's optimal to do it when patients check out of their appointments. I know with physical therapy um, patients, you know, they often have multiple sessions. So you can kind of do one in the middle and then one at the very last session, um, just especially if um, you know, they're happy with the results, that's the best time to ask. And also explain to um, let patients know that, uh, you know, with more reviews, um, your practice grows. Kind of give them a reason why to leave a review, right? So it helps me out, helps you out um, in that kind of, um, you know, approach. So um, kind of leaning off that, you still want to make it easy for patients to leave a review. Um, we recommend having like a QR code at the front desk. It's, e it's really easy to generate um, one online to the link um, to your Google profile or your Facebook profile or health grades. And then you want to make sure um, you know, you can have an easy to type link to or hand it out on business cards. Um, this is really great too. Um, you know, after their appointment, you kind of guide them to the QR code or, you know, have them scan on their card and then you can show them exactly how to leave a review. And this is really effective too. If you find that a lot of your, um, your patients are skewing a little bit older, um, they often kind of have trouble figuring out how to leave a review so that you can teach them. Um, and third, a lot of people, you know, I recommend having an online reputation management software. It just streamlines the whole process. You don't really have to worry about, um, you, know, you know, having staff members who are a little hesitant to ask for a review. Um, you can just kind of eliminate that completely by automatically sending something out, like a text or email. Um, and this is something I especially recommend if you are a physical therapy practice that has 
a very high volume of patients or multiple locations, because it's a lot to manage. Um, and like I said, this streamlines the whole process. So I'm gonna share with you um, our online reputation management um, software, just so you have an idea of kind of how it works um, and then things to kind of look out for when you're um, looking at other vendors. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of options out there, but um, they kind of have a similar process, but there's a, a few differences. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that right now. So with our process, um, we start by sending uh, patients a text or email survey after um, they've checked out of their appointments. So something similar to this, they click the link, they get this page. Um, and this also helps um, practices monitor patient satisfaction too. So with positive responses, um, we ask them to leave the feedback and then we ask them to leave a review on the following review sites. We typically give a few options. Um, we give Google, obviously, Facebook health grades. And we do this because um, not everybody has a Gmail and you do need a Gmail to leave a review on Google. So we often have Facebook, um, health grades, and then from there, the patient can choose whatever site they wanna leave a review at. And this is great too, because um, like I mentioned, we wanna make sure we get um, you know, reviews to a particular site, then you can adjust accordingly. And then if someone um, rates negatively, then um, we just ask them, okay, can you, um, you know, let us know what happened? Um, and then it helps mitigate the chances someone will leave a negative review um, because you get the feedback first, first and it helps you retain the patients better. Um, I do wanna note that um, review softwares don't 100% prevent um, negative reviews. Patients um, are always free to kind of head directly to the review site themselves if they're really upset. But like I said, our process helps mitigate that because a lot of times unhappy patients just wanna be heard. Um, so we give them kind of an outlet for all of that. So that's our process. I just recommend having something similar to this, having text and email options because um, not everyone leaves their email, not everyone leaves their cell phone for you guys. Um, and then also have an EMR integration option too. Um, that allows you to just upload everything um, automatically. Um, so those are things to look out for when you use an online reputation management software. Like I said, I really recommend that to generate you know, more happy reviews um, because the key is even if you get that negative review, if you have a lot of other um, positive ones, it's gonna look like an outlier, right? Um, rather than five negative reviews in a row. <laughs> so um, make sure you focus on generating those genuine reviews. So now let's talk about um, how to respond to reviews, right? Because the way you respond to reviews matters. Um, we always recommend um, responding to all reviews, even negative ones. Um, and we also recommend too, if you get that negative re review and you're able to identify who left it, call them up first. Um, a lot of times our clients were able to retain the patient, you know, by addressing their concerns, they can ask, and then they can ask the patient to update their, their review. Um, however, if you're unable to reach them, um, for negative reviews, this is how we recommend responding. You just first want to personalize the response, you know, address the user by their name, ensure, um, you know, it's not a canned robotic response because then prospective patients will kind of look at that and be like, okay, they're just, you know, responding just to respond. Um, but you really do want to address and thank them for the review. Um, I know this seems kind of counterintuitive, um, but you don't want to be combative. You always want to thank people for their feedback, you know, even if it's negative. And then you want to make sure, you know, you acknowledge the problem they're commenting on. Is it the wait time? Um, is it something with the staff interactions? A lot of the times it's not really to do with the level of care. It's to do with smaller stuff. Um, sometimes patients tend to be a little bit overdramatic <laughs> when they respond. So it's usually something to do with wait time or just billing or something like that. So you want to make sure um, you mention that in your response. And then obviously, too, you just want to apologize for their negative experience and show some empathy. And then fifth thing, really important, you want to make sure you take the conversation offline. And like I said, you don't want to be combative. You don't want to go back and forth with them. Just say, hey, um, we'd love to make this right. Can you give us a call at you know, this number? Um, it shows too to prospective patients, you're really taking the feedback seriously, um, because also if you start arguing or like mentioning certain things in the comment back, prospective patients will think, okay, so the, the patient's probably wrong and then the practice is probably wrong too. They're both being combative. So you still want to put yourself in a good light um, to protect your online reputation too. Um, last thing too, be, just beware of mentioning any personal health information. Um, I'm sure you guys already know because of HIPAA, but 
Sometimes patients will be very detailed in their review response. You just still don't want to mention too many things um, in the review response because it's really easy to uh, reference certain things. Um, but obviously, if they're not a patient, um, you can just say, hey, we don't find you in our records. Um, you know, could you please call us? So that's another thing I noticed too. Um, so those are some tips. Like I said, it's really important to make sure your response is very professional. Um, if you feel really heated by what they said, you know, take a step back, um, you know, take a breather. Um, Cause a lot of times that's when your reviews may come off as rude to other new patients that are looking. So those are some tips. Like I said, it's really important to make sure you respond to all the reviews. And then last, um, so we've gone this far, right? And you're generating a lot more reviews uh, theoretically. So you just wanna make sure you showcase all the reviews you worked really hard to get. Um, why? Because A, it builds um, you know, credibility. Um, when you have these patients looking on your website, looking at your Google reviews, you just wanna make sure you kind of put it right in front of them like, hey, we're a great practice, look at all our reviews, why wouldn't you choose us, right? So we recommend creating a separate testimonials page on your website. Um, at GMR, we automatically pull this um, like through our software, so it updates in real time. However, that's not really necessary for you. Um, if you don't have that capability, you can just create a separate page on your site, update the reviews you know, on a routine basis, you know, maybe every few weeks. And then you also wanna display the reviews on your homepage too. So maybe have a section um, somewhere on there that kind of rotates through the reviews or you at least you have some that are you know really detailed that kind of talk about okay why they love this practice why they had really great results from this PT um, so that's what I recommend um, you don't have to have any fancy widget but you just really want to showcase all the reviews you worked really hard to get um, so that's the fifth tip um, and yeah, now we're gonna just wrap up um, the webinar here. I just wanna go over quickly kind of what we discussed because I know I had a lot of information. Um, so first, obviously we talked about online reputation, how it plays a role um, in how your practice grows. So obviously negative reviews, it's gonna hinder your growth. So we wanna make sure we achieve that 4.0 star rating, have at least 10 reviews on all your review sites, uh, make sure you're getting reviews on a consistent basis, you know, every month, at least two to three. And then you wanna make sure to, you claim your listings, make sure your name, address, and phone number are exactly the same across all your review sites. Um, and make sure too that you monitor your reviews and that you create a review solicitation process, whether that's via QR code, easy to type link, or um, you have an online reputation software that you're using. Fifth, and you wanna make sure you respond to all reviews, positive and negative. With negative, make sure you keep it professional thank them for the review and take the conversation offline, right? And then last, um, you also wanna showcase your reviews that you worked really hard to earn. So make sure you have that testimonial page and then that widget. And then, um, so yeah, that's kind of the foundation of what you wanna to do to create a seller online reputation and what we do for our clients. Um, so if you're interested, we do have a reputation scorecard. So we grade it based on the things we just talked about, right? The star rating, the number of reviews, how recent your reviews are, are your review sites being found? So if you're interested in getting your you know, reputation scorecard, you can go to repugrade.com. Um, GMR made this ourselves and you can just enter your information. You get the report for free. And then if you're interested, I can also discuss the report with you and kind of go over you know, wh where you need to work um, to improve your online reputation. Yeah, so that's free and I can send the link to um, within this chat. Um, but now I, I'm more than happy to answer any questions about um, online reputation if you have any specific you know, strategies in mind. Okay. Thanks, Pauline. Hey, yes, and so let me... mm -hmm. Go ahead and unmute yourselves if you'd like to uh, ask a question, have a discussion. Um, yeah, and check out the link because I know Pauline already put uh, some of your. Yeah, up so I try to scan here. some of you guys ahead of time because it usually takes one to two business days to generate the report. So hopefully, if you guys enter your information, it, you know, it appears automatically. But it's a really great way to kind of just see how you're doing. And you can also enter um, your competitors in there if you're curious on what their score is um, because you do want to consider what reviews your competitors have too.